she calms down, looks around, and because she gets on seven to nine, they ask one of you as well. As she's looking around, she looks at you for a second and looks like she's trying to size you up. You get the feeling she knows you are listening. She's trying to size up your reaction. To kind of figure out basically who's pulling your strings. Okay. Then I think they catch... At one point, Isabel sort of pulled out a pendant that looks like it's just full of, like, mist and fog. It's just very moving. You can't always, if you just sort of glance at it, you assume, like, it's glitter or something. But if you look at it for a while, you realize it's not. And within it, and the person was able to actually get a look at this because she's sort of fiddling with it, is she sees the crest of her court. If that would make sense. Yeah. The, the mark of who, basically, who you serve. Yeah. Who's court. Yeah. Well, I say court, but yeah, whatever. Yeah. As you're fiddling with it, you just kind of get it to stop for just long enough and her eyes like lock on that. And she just focuses on that for a second and then looks back up and gives you a nod and then goes back to her conversation. Okay. Feel bad. Angel doesn't have a lot to do. <laughs> Angel's just hanging out with her cat. I think Millie is going to text the group chat with what she overheard. Just that the stranger seems to have some blackmail on some of the the wizard group. But the group is very much divided in how they feel about him. And there are some who are more angry at him, the ones that he has over a barrel. And there are others who are more interested in appeasing him. And she's just completely dropped all code words and emojis and is just like texting a full paragraph at this point. I will also emphasize, the ones who he was blackmailing seemed to be specifically angry when he was trying to brush off what happened to Cass as being an accident. Just a ghost. Noted. And that's also in there. And then someone brought up the meeting and caught off before he could finish that sentence. And also the note that the ones that weren't angry looked guilty. But Isabel, you aren't entirely sure what the context for this is. Yeah, no, Isabel's just like... You can probably piece together some of the context. Yeah. Actually, Isabel, roll to put a face to a name and roll plus power. Plus power? Okay. Ooh, that's a six. You have no idea who Cass is. Okay. But she does know that Millie owns the theater, which is where Cass was killed by, right? You can probably put the pieces of the conversations together. Yeah. Together, like, oh, someone was murdered at the theater, people are trying to say it's a ghost, that doesn't feel right. And just You're just having all of the dots connect. Okay, yeah, and that's really it. Okay. But you have no idea who Cass is. No, I think Isabel will gently sort of nudge Millie and sort of whisper, you and I will need to talk about your building after this. Just so I can understand more of what's going on. You know, more of the history of the place. Oh, certainly. It's a wonderful event space. I'd love to give you a tour. Mm. Well, let's see how the rest of the night goes. It's the middle of the day on Saturday. <laughs> oh, how the rest of the day goes. Sorry, I don't know why I thought this was at night. Yeah. Also, if you, you've gotten whatever food you've ordered and the wizards are also eating. Okay. And having uh, vaguely important, mostly kind of boring sounding discussions about like allocation of like ma- of magical supplies and so forth and blah, blah, blah. Isabel's going to sort of share what she learned from the family she was sort of watching. I was saying there was a police person that looked like they were an off-duty at the time with their, I guess, their family. And was it the police person who caught? Yeah, it was specifically, it was the officer who caught, caught her, you watching. Okay, police officer. Okay. It was... 
Well, actually, no, you don't know if she's a werewolf. You can guess that she's a werewolf. I don't know if you know for sure. Can I roll to put a name to a face for that officer? Yes, so you will be rolling with knight. Yay, another knight person. <laughs> that is an 11. Oh, boy. You look over and you're like, oh, hey, that's Denise Ward. She's not just a police officer. She's basically one of the senior most officers that our bridge has. And she's also, she and her sister are the pack leaders in our bridge. So you've, you've dealt with Denise before. She's very loyal, keeps things very straightforward. Of course she's pissed off that someone is interfering with her investigation. So do you want to know it something interesting and useful, or do you want her to owe you a debt? Well, she owes me a debt, definitely, for sure. What does she owe you for? Ooh. Hmm. That's a difficult one. Also, you also know that the people she's at a table with, it's her sister and her brother. Mm, okay, cool. It might just be that through my business connections with Windward, I've been able to supply them with things that were maybe not in the budget at the police department, but that they desperately needed to do their jobs. Magical things that are a little bit harder to get your hands on, and, you know, we just won't ask where they came from. It's fine. Yeah, and it's just, it's stuff that, it's stuff that wolves specifically need. Mm. Because, you know, sometimes, like, sometimes it's a little harder to keep the control. So they're Scooby Snacks. (laughs) Basically. (laughs) Just things that help with, like, help with the calming and the focus. For a wolf to be on the force, they have to have pretty good control, but sometimes the job gets to you a little bit, and that starts to slip a little bit. As well as other sort of protective things when they have to go up against a supernatural nasty. Yeah, so she owes you. Actually, with the way I just described it, she might owe you two. Yeah. I mean, I'll take it if you want to give it to me. Yeah. So you recognize her, and she recognizes you as you look over. When you look over, she gives you a nod, smile, and a little wave. Not drawing a lot of attention, but acknowledging you. Millie does the very old-fashioned, like, reaches up and taps the side of her nose twice with her pointer finger, like, Oh yes, I see you. Smiles, because she's used to... She, she's aware of vampires sometimes continue on old habits and social traditions. She just nods and goes back to her conversation with her sister and her brother. Great. Occasionally shooting a dirty look over at the table. (laughs) At the other table. So I think Millie is going to drop into the group chat that the co-heads of the werewolf pack slash senior police, comma, Denise and her sister and brother are here and clearly do not like the stranger and really have it out for him. Also, don't look particularly happy with the wizards, too. Oh, yeah, they're just furious. And I think she sends it like that. She's like, they are furious. And then, like, five smiley faces. Because she petty. Panning back, Angel, what are you doing with this information? At the moment, there's not a whole lot to do. What? Okay, wizards are power. I was right. Okay. Right now, she's silently scheming. <laughs> like, her fingers, she's absently got her hand, one hand on the wheel or on the uh, armrest, and her fingers are just kind of tapping as she's putting pieces together in her head, trying to figure out how can we make use of the wizards that are if we find out which wizards have the blackmail if she'll probably send a message directly responding to the message about the wizards and be like can you get me names the blackmailed millie has those names right that was you gave me that yes and so she knows who those people are and can just provide the names yeah can you give me those again yeah so william thompson the blue 
they all have given themselves colors. Well, the people at the top gave them colors. The ones at the bottom just kind of dealt with it. He was one of the scientists, and Theodore Marin was the other scientist, who I think you're already aware that he was being blackmailed for something. Did I say John Chambers? Yes, but I didn't catch it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Millie goes ahead and relays those names. And then on top of that, with the new information about the werewolf pack and the cops inside currently, she's pondering how to make use of them if shit goes sideways. And just like, she's planned, she's got this whole plan in her head of if things go right, I follow him, X happens. If shit goes sideways, Y and Z plan. All of the, all of the plans, all of the theories, you have like a conspiracy board in your head. Basically, yeah. It might rival Roz's. Might. Might. <laughs> By the end of this, definitely. <laughs> yeah. So, what are you all going to do now? As the camera pans back from Angel scheming. Isabel, she's also going to sort of reply to Millie's response about the... The leaders of the wolf pack? Yeah, the wolf pack. Yeah, she glanced at me. I think she saw my boss's sigil, but they're really desperate. She was really desperate to have anything solid on... How did Millie put it? The guest of honor? So they could try to kick him out. I don't know how... Your boss is, too. Okay, yeah, that's true. I don't know if he spelled it out to you, because George is about keeping things more or less in balance to a okay. certain degree. That is quote. Yeah. Yeah. Or at least, you know, keep enough balance so as mankind keeps wandering into new areas of stupid things to do, they don't kill themselves kind of thing. Just okay. Keep things balanced enough so the world won't end. And he doesn't like the stranger. There's a reason he assigned you specifically to come and gather some information. Because things have been happening. Okay. You know, he was looking into possibly some people who may know something about him. Someone who may have seen something. Just give me a high or low. High? High? I rolled a six. What's the likelihood of a thing happening? You know, he very recently mentioned that he heard rumors of an oracle. The last oracle that was still in Oak Ridge, because most oracles don't stick around because it drives them nuts. And he wanted to talk to that oracle because he thinks she might have seen something to do with the stranger. Okay, so George wants to see the oracle. Okay. Yeah. So at some point during Angel's scheming, she picks up her phone and she just texts Isabel alone. And she's like, how clued in are you to the everything? That's a good question. <laughs> it would have just be, how clued in are you? <laughs> That's an excellent question. Because it depends on to what. Yeah, it depends um, on what. You know, the stranger's new player in town who quickly got more power than he should have seems to know much more than he should. And George and several others really don't like him being here. You get the feeling okay. there's there's something about this stranger and the effect that he is having. There's also something about... There's like a place in the woods, a cabin, that... For a while, there was something wrong with it. And you were probably about to be sent to go investigate that, but it seems to have been taken care of. That is going back into balance, because there was a big wrongness that was spreading out, but it's starting to dissipate. Mm, okay. So he believes that the stranger being here could be very bad. Okay. It's also a difficult question, because, like, yeah. how much do you know that you don't know? Yeah. Yes, that's right. I had to follow that in my own head. <laughs> okay, question. Does Angel know about George? Not that you're aware of. Angel, would you like to roll to put a face to a name to see if you know anything about George? Yes, please. What circle is that with? Wild. 
eight. I mean, you're probably not gonna know much about him, but you are vaguely aware of an entity that refers to themselves as George Jones. They're a bit of an enigma. Either the leader of a fey court in here, or at least like the face and protector of it, because the places with older magic, sometimes the person who is visually leading is not actually the leader kind of thing. You've never actually met him, though. And I'm pretty sure you're fine with that. I mean, she's never met some of the people that are pulling her strings, so she's... Fair point. That's not out of the norm. Yeah, so you are, you are aware. You are also know for a fact. That's not his actual name. Well, yeah. That's just the name he goes by. George Jones. Okay, so Isabel would sort of reply... Well, that's not vague at all, but... Is that the first, like, message? You're probably also aware that Isabel works for Answers to George. Okay, mm. I was gonna say. My boss is not a fan of, of the newcomer. He feels that he has gotten into power far too quickly, as I'm now witnessing... Sort of just by how some of the wizards are trying to suck up to him. And others are stewing without able to really do much right now. There was an issue with a cabin that I was probably about to investigate. You can guess which cabin. Oh yeah. Yeah, like that's going away. So now I got assigned to do some reconnaissance. The, the three dots pop up for a long time. His, uh, Angel's delivering an info dump. <laughs> okay, all right. Isabel also is like, also, there's some mention of a cast at that table in the theater, which I'm pretty sure is the one that Millie owns. Who is this cast person and why did they die there? There is a specter theory, but I'm assuming that's wrong. Because... You get the response. Oh boy. <laughs> Cass was the final oracle. Oh. And her death set off a chain of events that we need to stop within the next three days. Or we need to knock him down a peg or three to give us more time to get him kicked the feck out. He knows so much, we think, because he's from... This, is, this wouldn't be a pause because it's text but yeah. I'm trying to figure out how she would put this. Well, you know Faye come from somewhere else, so... Yeah. Oh, that would help. Okay. We think he's from another world. Universe. Multiverse. Theory. So, plane of existence next to ours. And he was from a different one? From what I've gathered, he's obviously not supposed to be here. Cass couldn't see him in her visions, so he is behind her death. I know that. Uh, we can't prove it. The Spectre Theory has some merit. Because no physical person was present. Oh yeah, you listened to the recording. Yeah. There's something tethering him here. We need to find what it is and destroy it, according to one of Cass's journals. The people... Were... Did we get that information? What did we know about them? The four people who disappeared, they were the people who kicked his ass out of the last reality he tried to eat. So we do know that in... Yes. Okay. The cabin you're talking about, also related to him. Probably. He's been... Disappearing people. There's four of them that have disappeared, and what we found out, they were the ones that kicked his arse out university was in. So... To keep him out of the way this time, he disappeared him. Took their souls, actually. Because we found two of their... Well... Others found two of their bodies missing souls. <laughs> it's really fun watching Alexis's face. <laughs> <laughs> that was one message. Okay. And then the three dots appear again. John Hendricks was one of the first oracles, and his 
prophecy, one of his last prophecies is why we know we've got the three day time limit and why we know that Cass's death is the oracle for that. There's also an organization called Multi, and she spells it M-U-L-T-I. May or may not be how that's spelled. I only heard it spoken. I think that's where it stops. Practically flipping through notes. Did I get it all? I think I got the broad strokes. Yeah. So, Isabel, how are you reacting to all of that? I think Isabel furrows her brow as she's sort of reading these, like, what I'm assuming is, like, three or four texts, like, paragraphs of text, just sort of scrolling through, like, what, what, and then, huh, it, what, it. When Angel talks about the planes, she sort of thinks for a second, glances quickly over at the stranger, and is thinking, he's not from... Definitely not, they. He's not Fang? Definitely okay. not Fang. Hmm. I wonder if... Would George know where he's... Would, or, Isabel probably refers to George more as boss than George. Because... <laughs> yeah. It's like a, it's a respect thing. You've been working with George for a while. They live a long time. Does the boss know where he's from? Would he have told me that? I guess I'll have to ask later. Now I'm wondering, is George a modern fae who uses a phone? Or is there just a way you can send a text and it like appears in a book that he has? George is an enigma, but you have some way you can communicate information with him? I would hope so. You have like one of those little like journalist notebooks that flip up and you can write stuff in it and he'll get it? Okay. I don't think she'd pull that out right now because that she doesn't want anyone specifically knowing she's connected to George just in case things get a little weird. Well, except the Denise, who knows, but... I think Isabel sort of will be like, when you say bodies without souls, you mean, like, sort of empty shells? Animated, like, empty shells? Or... I haven't seen them myself. But yes, not dead, but missing souls. I heard it was a bit of a trouble getting them because they were violent. There were shadowy things that attacked them. These people themselves were basically comatose. Also, if it helps, Millie was there. You can always let her know that Millie had to carry the bodies, so that's a thing. Millie's got more detail. She's one of the ones that found them. Okay. Isabel will sort of reply, I'll ask her later. I don't want to talk about sensitive information with him nearby. Don't know how strong his ears are. Probably smart. Any idea what he resembles the closest? I'm not sure. He's either something like a friend of mine and able to travel through dimensions or another thought I had, uh, some sort of demonic being. Those are my theories. I haven't gotten close enough to figure it out yet. Yeah, we don't want... You wouldn't want to do that without some sort of protection, I think. Unless you can somehow disguise yourself. Hmm. I'll have to think about that. And Isabel just sort of stops at that point. Also, just because I want to add some... You know, fun things to make you just a little bit nervous. No, you just glance around while they're talking and you make eye contact with the stranger. Just brief. And he winks at you, a very flirty wink, before going back to his conversation. Oh, well. She is definitely reacting favorably. Definitely doing the, like, hair swish and kind of little kicks because her feet don't quite reach the ground on a bar stool. <laughs> just to make sure, is is Millie like a child or she's just shorter? Millie's short. Yeah. Okay, she's, she, cool. She's from a time when women were tiny because food was scarce. 
Okay, I just wanted to make sure she wasn't like turned as a child, and that would okay. No, cool. no, no. We're good. Never mind. No, that no, would no, be no, much no. weirder. She's like twenty-two or twenty-three forever. Okay. Okay. Just cool. small. Okay. Thank yeah, you. she's just short. Even in modern day, some people are just short. Yeah, I just wasn't sure when she was turned. Yeah, yeah, no, very valid, very Yeah, I, I don't do child vampires, no. So I think Millie is probably sitting there just full on, like, twisting her hair around a finger and being more blatant about watching him. Isabel, how are you reacting to the fact that Millie is now eye-flirting, like, hardcore flirting with the stranger? That's a PG way of putting it. Yeah. <laughs> Does Isabel get the sense that Angel helps keep Millie on track with things? Angel and Millie haven't really worked together a lot. This is kind of like a new oh shit, oh shit, oh shit thing. Okay. While you're pondering how you respond, Stranger reaches up to a passing waiter and hands him a slip of paper and gestures like, um, just take it to that lady over there at the bar. Thank you for letting me let chaos happen. This'll be fun. This was not in my plans. Uh, it wasn't in mine either, but I'm fucking jazz. Let's go. <laughs> Millie takes the paper. Okay, does does Isabel notice that? The stranger's trying to send pass something over to Millie? Passes it to a waiter to give to Millie. Roll plus mind to see if you notice that or if you're too busy trying to figure out what are you doing? Yeah. Okay, that's a nine, so. You don't catch all of the movement, but you catch enough out under the corner eye to get the vibe that, and also the waitress comes over and, and passes this slip of paper to Millie, which does indeed have a phone number on it. No name, just a phone number. Give me that number. I think <laughs> Millie does, like, take it just, like, so exaggerated. Everything about the movements is just like, yes, thank you. This is for me. And she probably giggles, folds it, and like taps it against her lip while locking eyes with him. He gives you a very flirty response back. Fabulous. And I'll say, Isabel, you also notice like as the waitress was handing Millie something... She also slips what feels like a note into your pocket before continuing on. Is there any way she can sort of subtly you try to read it? I believe there is a roll. Trick? Trick? Okay. You can do trick. Yeah, um, there's mislead, mislead distractor, distractor trick. trick. Okay. Try and play it off like something else. You could also do uh, keep your cool. You either roll with mind or roll with spirit. Or if I figure out something, I have in our blood. So when you mislead, distract, or trick someone through lies of mission or clever misdirection, roll with heart instead of mind. Yeah, also that does make more sense reading because you are trying to gain the upper hand through deception. So give me the roll. I'll do that. Okay. Okay, children, which of you are going to be nice? Please be nice. I don't want this to Ooh, okay, that's an eight. Okay, so on a seven to nine, pick two. You can create an opportunity, expose a weakness or flaw, confuse people for some time, or avoid further entanglement. Okay, would this be against this? Would this be against like the stranger or against any of the people that you don't want to tangle with? Okay. Well, this is also to read the note, right? Yeah, so I think create an opportunity to read the note subtly is going to be one of them. Mm hmm I guess an inf avoid further entanglement with people seeing the note and being like, you have more information, don't you? Whichever side they're on, on that feeling in regards to a stranger. So Millie straight up doesn't notice this, too. Yeah, Millie, you are... You are too busy. There is a very handsome gentleman making very suggestive faces at you. Oh, good. I should have known better. Lots of the flirty eyebrow wiggles. 
Angel, you just feel this intense urge to face palm in your car and you don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I think Isabel's also going to use the group chat with all three of them and be like, Millie, unless this is a honey trap situation, do not flirt with the guest of honor. And I think Millie hears her phone goes off and does not look at it. Angel reads it and does in fact facepalm in her car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why should I send her in? Oh, this is gonna be because she was the only one there. <laughs> yeah. I'll say, Isabel, as you open the note, it has an address and a time on it. And that's written in black pen. And there's like, it looks like someone's like scribbling to get a pen to work. But it was a different color pen. It was kind of like this orangish color. Hmm. Would you roll plus mind? Okay. Oh, I should have been in there. Mind is my strong suit. Yeah. Okay, that's a nine. That's not horrible. You see the orange scribble and you're like, oh, this is... Because the old men, the wizards that basically rule the city, they each go by a color. And one of the ones that was suspected of being blackmailed... He is known as the Octarine, which is an orange color. I was actually, let me Google to make sure I actually know what that color looks like. Octarine is an orange green that only wizards and cats can see. You're welcome. Ooh. Cool. Yes. It is this orange green color. Okay. Also, like, Faye can see it too, because magic. Yes, magic. Okay, so it looks like it was sent from him, or just he owned the paper at one point? That is the question. Yeah. So the scribble, it feels like it, that was done intentionally. He okay. He couldn't quite okay. sign his name, but that was a way of indicating who it is. Which one is that? Okay. Which... Theodore. Oh. Theodore. And it's got an address and a time that I'll say is uh, 6 p.m. Okay. Kind of like a, hey, we need to talk sort of thing. I wonder if it's just to Isabel or to everyone. It got dropped to Isabel because the waitress is like, I'm not about to give this to the one that is currently yeah. making eyes at literally the worst person in this room. It's just saying okay. something because some of the other old men sitting next to him also suck. Excuse you, the worst person in town. Millie has standards and they're very high. Yeah. Person who prob mo probably most definitely murdered Cass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your friend? Mm-hmm. In your theater? Mm-hmm. Angel's getting a headache. <laughs> Bad question. Is Millie planning on murdering him afterwards? I mean, there's a lot of assumptions happening right there. I think Millie <laughs> does add the number to her phone. And then she messages the group chat with everyone and just sends, I got the stranger's number, smiley face, lipstick, dancing girl. <laughs> I'll say as you do that, you notice that there have been some other messages sent to the group from Hess. Oh, good. And they read, Hey y'all, Cole and I are off to meet Lily's friend, Multi. Apparently they are multiverse realm guardians, I think. Good news, they want to stop a stranger, so potentially new allies, question mark, question mark. We're going to meet them, so if you don't hear from us in two hours, send help. And then, like, 20 minutes later, um, there's the address. Going underground into the multi-base might lose signal. If you don't hear from us in two hours, still come rescue us. Also, can someone pick, pick up wind, their piano, guitar, and violin strings? We got distracted in the theater. Angel, you also get that. This is to the big group chat. Oh, that Isabel's not part of. She looks at the word multi for a moment. Son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, okay. Follow up on that later. As that's going on, 
The wizards will get up to leave, including the stranger who gives you one last wink, Millie, before disappearing out the front door. And Angel, do you still intend to follow? Oh, yes. Nothing is... Well, she, and she has no clue about the note Isabel got, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah, Isabel hasn't. Yep, so no, she's totally, yeah, still dead set on following the stranger. All right. Give me the roll. Ten. All right. So as the stranger gets into their... I was gonna say rental car. Actually, no, it's one of the wizards' car, because some of the wizards own more than one car. Mm-hmm. So one of them is just straight up letting the, wi- the stranger drive their car. And you will be able to follow him, and we'll see where that gets you next time. Tempest Malta is a production of Pseudonym Social, changing reality one story at a time. It is an actual play podcast using Urban Shadows 2E Quick Start Guide, and it's set once again in the town of Oak Ridge, Tennessee. I am your keeper and producer. Hi there, I'm Maria Perry. I'm playing Millie Elza, your local vampy vampire. I am Ava Rogers. I will be playing Angel Day, the sworn. To get more information on this or any of our other shows, check out our website at pseudonymsocial.com.